Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first happy hour of the Lucerne Festival in 2021. And I'm extremely proud and delighted and, and very, very happy uh, to welcome Yu Jia Wang, the famous pianist who <laughs> will be artist at the Lucerne Festival in summer 2021. Yu Jia, you are in New York. Hi. You're sitting in front of an incredible, crazy piano. Can you tell us more about it? I know. It's very floral. I'm surrounded by in a gallery where the artist does um, dried flowers and then they made it, they printed on a piano. And, and so, yeah, it could, I mean, I heard the theme of the festival is called crazy. So here's a little craziness for you. <laughs> <laughs> now, who designed it? Who designed the piano? Well, it's, it's a Soundway piano. Uh, the artist is, I just, uh, met her. Her name is Trisha, uh, and turns out we're neighbors. I mean, oh, there's fantastic. New York for you. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. are we going to see this piano in Lucerne in the summer? <laughs> <laughs> if you're ready for it, I'm definitely going to wear black because that's too much color for me. <laughs> yeah, but it would be yeah. uh, fascinating to see it in Lucerne and Yuja. I mean, crazy times. Nobody's yeah. performing, all the concert halls are closed, uh, not to mention the opera houses, but uh, and the, all the exhibition spaces are down, the arts are down, but you, as it seems, are up. And how do you experience these times? Uh, how do you spend your days now? Um, like an altered state. Uh, I mean, I think I've been a pianist kind of from the childhood and then uh it's like going 300 miles per hour and all of a sudden i have a i have a pause like a gp a grand pause <laughs> but uh for like a year you know it's it's very extreme it's very extreme but i'm like i'm loving it i got i got a fish tank i uh planted lots of flowers uh in my in my place so i basically are doing things that i would never have time to do when I'm busy traveling and I really like it because it, you do, you know, uh, take things down and uh, like you do have time, um, you experience time differently. And um, it feels, um, I don't know, I also feels like time goes really fast. Like I can't believe it's 2021 already, uh, yeah. Have you had uh, the chance maybe to discover some new pieces, new repertoire? Something I have not. I have. I have not been a musician. <laughs> oh. I have not been a musician. I took a a, a big. Uh, I took a long time to not listen to music. It's it's very purging. It's like a I don't know if it's purging or purgatory, but I I choose to do something ra radically different from uh from what what I'm always used to which is music. Um, and I think that's just my reaction to the whole thing. Like I want to see, I mean, I haven't done any stream concerts. Uh, I know that was very popular in the beginning and um, I don't know. I don't know if coming back it would be, it feels very, yeah, it feels, it would feel very foreign to come back, but I hope it also can, uh, bring some other things. I mean, before it always feels like, what's next? What's the next concert? What repertoire I'm doing? What's next? What's the next project? You know, it's constantly like forward looking. Uh, rather than just now, I feel like I'm just living the now. Like I'm just living. I'm not uh, planning or I'm not anticipating the next thing. And I'm just, you know, you feel like crazy. Uh, <laughs> you know, a little bit like there's a rebellion going on within you that uh, your personality I don't is think changing? It's, or? Well, I don't think it's rebellion rather than a very natural organic growth. Uh, there's no rebellion. It's not like, oh, I hate music. It's not that. It's just, uh, I, it's an experiment. Like I'm just taking, I'm backing away from it a little bit and to see what does it do with, with me, with me. Um, in, psychically or spiritually or me as a person, what does it do? Um, because I think I took on being a musician without questioning everything. Um, actually, without questioning anything. <laughs> and, uh, and it's very natural for me. 
and I loved it. There's so much joy. But uh, now, kind of, I've been there, done that. I mean, do I? People are like, do I miss traveling? Obviously, I miss the festivals. I miss meeting interesting people. I also miss the parties and amazing food and you know everything. But do I actually miss traveling? The, the actual part of like going to the airport and checking bags and everything, absolutely not. <laughs> so um, I think also, I guess people are like, oh, you must miss coming back to what it was. And yes, I, I miss experience the, the live audience energy and all that stuff. But maybe there's a different way nowadays to, uh, Maybe there's a different way to, I don't know, put a hologram of me or something. <laughs> uh, yeah. Now, how do you think? Of, mm -hmm. We've obviously, you know, we've been in this now for more or less a year. I mean, China's been in this since last uh, December 19, and we are in it more or less since February or March mm -hmm. uh, 20. Uh, so we're approaching a year. And, you know, I can't it's not, believe it's a year. We don't, see, we don't, I mean, we hope there's an end and we hope we're back into the normal life, but uh, we don't have the guarantee yet. And mm. how do you think this is um, going to change the arts, our professions? Is it going to come back to the same or are we going to change that's, ourselves? That's what no. I was saying. I hope it's not going to be the same. I hope uh, after this pause, we do take a breather from our life. I mean, it's perfect. It's like I'm having a forced midlife crisis, like to, to think what I'm doing with my life um, and to think how we're doing it and why, you know, all these questions. And uh, they are things that I would love to take uh, from what it was, but they are things that definitely needs improvements. Um, but one thing for sure is we do miss having art. I mean, I've been in New York since my last concert was Carnegie Hall in uh, February 20, uh, 28th last year. And I just can't believe it's a year past. It's, it's, it just flew by over cuckoo's nest. And then, uh, <laughs> and then um, New York is, especially I live in the theater town, the theater district, whatever, and House Kitchen. And there's absolutely nobody, it's a ghost town without Broadway show, without, you know, ballet, opera, New York film, and, um, and Hell's Kitchen. Hell's Kitchen is actually really cute right now with everything um, on the street. Uh, so you have one lane for the cars. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but it's, it's, I don't know, I just, I would love, I can't wait to go to Switzerland in the mountains and talk to the cows and I don't know. <laughs> well, the mountains and the cows are waiting for you and we're so much looking forward to having you as our artist Etoile, the, the resident Very artist. Very honored. Uh, yes. We picked a nice theme for you. The theme is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, we're all, it's all so justified. really a little bit crazy, I must say. And, um, but, uh, as long as you know, I'm not going crazy and I'm not driving you guys crazy, then, then crazy is perfect. Yeah. No, no, no. We, <laughs> we like a little bit to be driven crazy. I think it does us good in Switzerland. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Masochist. Switzerland is not known as a crazy country, but it's becoming more so. And um, right. uh, in terms of crazy experiences, what was your craziest concert experience? Well, I have to say, like the last 20 years of my life was pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe the craziest uh, time you had or something that was completely unexpected, unbelievable. Um, I, I don't know, I guess it's a sum total of, I mean, I, I, I went through what I have, all the concert and all the different places in the last five years on my diary. And it just, it looks completely crazy to me. And I think the experience wise, um, it's probably when I'm attending a concert. Um, and of course my opening concert in Luzerne with Claudio Abado, I could never ever forget it in my whole life. First of all, I think it's crazy of him to ask me to play without even meeting me. I think he heard a recording of me a um, long time ago. I mean, uh, yeah, back then. And then 
he just decided to play Prokofiev III with me. Uh, <laughs> that was crazy. Um, but yeah, I just, I think that's why I miss playing live concert. Uh, and on the other side of the coin, listening to live concert, because one can, the best teacher, I think, is those experiences that we take from listening to a live concert. And, uh, and that experience, it just, it's so cathartic. It's, it washes over you. It's, it completely overwhelms one's emotion. And I guess it's like smoking ayahuasca or something. <laughs> like, you know, LSD experience, it must be, it's life altering. And music has that power. Uh, and you don't know what it is. We can't really describe with, with words afterwards, but you remember somewhere in the, in the subconscious. And, uh, but that's, so yeah, I can't, I can't tell you one experience that was like that. I think it's a string of experience like that, that, um, that one takes over the life with, with you, yeah. You know, I remember so well sitting um, with Claudia Bard in his home in Sardinia. I don't know which year it was precisely. It was uh, I played with him in 2009, yeah. 2006 or seven. we were sitting in his home and he, he had listened to your recording and he said, oh, you know, Michael, I want to play with Yu Jawang. Do you know Yu Jawang? And I said, <laughs> oh, well, I heard about her. And, you know, and then he said, no, I want to play with her and bring her <laughs> to Jawang. And it was amazing. And, and, and 2009 oh, I have is goosebumps when you say this. <laughs> yeah, me too, actually. You know? Yeah. Especially, I mean, the concert in Beijing in the NCPA Hall. Uh, it was amazing. And you know, when when he walked in and you walked in, people were just standing up <laughs> long before anything happened. And you yeah, know, that was a fantastic relationship you had with Claudio, uh, artistically and. Um, how did you feel with him? I mean, how, what did that mean to you? It means, it means my past. <laughs> it means the world for me. Because, you know, I, I left China when I was 14. And um, as a prodigy, and then they say, oh, let's, and then they never heard of me. And then I came back for the first time, back to China with the concert with Lutheran Festival and Claudio. And then it was like such a, power thing. <laughs> it's like, now you heard of me. Uh, <laughs> no. Um, Claudio, I, I did, I did a recording of Rock 2 and Paganini as well. Uh, and, and of course the Prokofis 3 and that's sadly, because I only know him the last two years of his life to start playing with him. And then we had things planned in Paris and then he passed away. So it was, it was very, you know, like, it's like life. You, something too good you don't have it you don't possess it forever so so but every time i play with him it, it it's um you know he doesn't talk <laughs> he doesn't say a thing yeah, i know during rehearsal <laughs> yeah <laughs> also not in other meetings he doesn't talk much he never did <laughs> yes uh and then i guess the, he took the silent speaks a little too far but uh, <laughs> but he does um which, you know, when, when I was young, I was very unsure, like, does he, how does he find my, you know, the, like, do I play okay? Or, um, and he, even when I ask him, he's saying very, very, very little, but he really says everything and gives self, gives himself everything when the concert starts. Like, I, I'm sure lots of artists have that experience and mentioned this. It's just, it's like a different, I think the whole like giving yourself up to this something larger than life, which is music and, and just swimming in this sound world, which KKL is an amazing space for that. And um, you, you know, I, I, that, that's a very spiritual experience. And, and he just, for some reason, I don't know what I was doing. I just felt very, very intense. It's a very intense experience. And then um, it's almost like he, if you ask me to practice for hours, I would never achieve that. But he brings me up to that level while the concert happens. 
And it's amazing with the space and concert halls um, that I felt like it's like a seed, it's like an energy thing. You plant it there. So that was my first concert there. So every time during the last 10 years, I go back to KKL, I can still feel that energy when I enter that hall. Um, and I remember I did Bar Talk 2 there, which I was very happy about. And then again, I went back to do Pro Cover 3 last year with Kirill Petrenko, with Bird and Phil. And this uh, recital was Leonidas. And every time I enter that hall, I, I remember um, the first time I play with uh, Claudio, that, that energy. And um, there are still halls like that. I mean, something like Carnegie Hall or the new Paris uh, for Harmony. But uh, it's, uh, I guess it's kind of like a, a sound, a, a church for musicians, you know? <laughs> it is, it is. It's yeah. a cathedral. It's a cathedral. A cathedral. But you know, the concerts yeah. with you and Claudio are remembered forever. And it, it set the ground for many more experiences uh, in the Cern. Now. <laughs> now we have a great experience coming up with your residence in the summer. And there's, uh, you're yeah. going to meet, you're going to start with another conductor who's very close to the festival as well, Yannick Nezisega, mm -hmm. and who's a close, you know, musical partner of yours. And how are you yeah. looking forward to that with the Lucerne Festival Orchestra? Yeah, Yannick, we did, um, we started this close relationship in Philadelphia and I did lots of Rachmaninoff, perfect place to play the, the concertos and also in Rotterdam. And um, I'm so curious and looking forward to, um, to play with him with the festival orchestra. And it's, it's going to be Mozart. Um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> Mozart D minor, one of my favorites. Um, you know, I, I haven't really delved into the music yet. I'm still in my COVID uh, <laughs> non-music approach lifestyle. Um, so I, I, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna like it, I think. <laughs> no, I'm sure it's gonna be um, great. And, and Yannick is also yeah. this type of musical personality, really. He lets go and he, he involves everybody. Very, the strong, strong, uh, participative uh, momentum about him. Yes, you always speak yes. about the orchestra, yes. he pulls in the orchestra and he's, you know, that's, that's the feeling I get uh, when, he, when I see He immerses, yeah, he immerses yeah. in the music. Yeah. I remember- Very inclusive. Uh, I remember the Voltec I went to, uh, I think last year. Yeah, I saw that too, fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, that was amazing. That was one of those. So the experiences, you're just like, oh, okay, I'm so glad to be here. Yeah, and we have Brahms coming up with COE also. So I guess we're switching from Rachmaninoff to more platonic <laughs> repertoire. Um, let's see, and I don't, um, I don't play Mozart very often, so it's gonna be very interesting. And then I'm also very much looking forward to the other three appearances. Yeah, of course. It's gonna be my first time playing with Ivan Fisher and yeah. uh, and Rahman of four and and Mahler yeah, Valerie, Chambers. Valerie Gagia. Mahler, yes. Oh love him. Um, and uh, and Rah four is it's also, you know, I think he is one of those composers that uh, like like all Russian ones, I mean, I mean, I sh shouldn't say Russian, but I mean, the one I'm thinking is Stravinsky, where every decade of his life is like a new style of music. But Rachmaninoff stayed Rachmaninoff, but his later music, like the symphonic dance and, um, and this particular concerto is just so much depth, <laughs> so much depth that it's hard to take them out, like the earlier ones, right? <laughs> so it's not as popular, but I mean, it, it's so, uh, it just moves uh, so much. I, I don't know. I, I mean, if anything, um, I hear now, music-wise, I hear Rachmaninoff sym symphonies or Tchaikovsky. Um, I f I, for me, it's like the pop music of classical music or something. <laughs> it's like when I want to, to feel, you know, Persian, that's the music I go to. I mean, also Brahms' Requiem. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but definitely not Wagner for some reason. Um, well, you know, 
both uh, Rachmaninoff and Wagner lived in Lucerne, so you have yet time to discover Wagner, but his piano literature I is somewhat restricted. <laughs> but they're right. list paraphrase. You know, they're great yes. uh, list um, um, paraphrase um, over yes. operas uh, by Wagner. So yeah. maybe one day you will uh, make a recording of that or perform it at the Lucerne Festival. <laughs> Just wait until I sing. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have time. You have a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. You no, know, but um, you know we are incredibly looking forward to to the residency with you in the summer, and um, I'm sure it will take place. You know, it will be a different world, and for us also, the Lucerne Festival. You know, we've been running concerts, 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 and I've mm. also been not in in your style, but not in your dimension, traveling a lot and and uh, organizing residencies in China and all over the place. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, this has been really now to do one concert already means a lot. And I think that's in a way, it's not good for our business, but it's good for the arts. Because you begin to come back and, and realize what one performance means and right. how much it can be and how much oh, like, maybe also how, 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 how more deep you can go and experience. And I think that's that's going to happen in the summer. Um, in, yeah. in which in which way it will happen, uh, we cannot guarantee. And I think that. But that doesn't was, matter. <laughs> no, with, I mean, with, that I, was the great thing with Claudio. Yeah. Claudio, he always had the feeling, you know, because he was ill also, and he was fighting his his illness. That you had the feeling maybe this is the last concert, and this brought everybody to the to the border. And I think that the arts in a, in a border type situation become yet a different um, experience, uh, a phenomena that, you know, brings the human being to, to crossroads. And I think that's, uh, oh, uh, yeah. And you're definitely an artist that can do that. And uh, we're so much- Oh, we go to extremes. <laughs> yeah. So- We become you know, maniacs, yeah. <laughs> I love that you know, when it's on the edge, when you know it's just here yeah. and now, and you can't, you know, you don't know. Right. Actually, that's that's a motto of my concerts. Well, before, I don't know if I can yeah. have that motivation, but like, um, you know, treat every concert is, it's your last concert. Yeah. And, and as an artist, like, we're not like Einstein who discovered this formula and is there forever and he's done. It's like, we're only as good as our last concert, right? So, um, all those things and and it, it shows the, the ephemeral ephemeral quality uh, that's so essential in music and uh and and that's why it's so so much treasure i mean look at this art here this piano stays here but but how i play that one concert without recording is just evaporated forever and it's only the people who sit there and and the yeah I miss live concerts. I mean, I miss listening to it, I miss playing it. And that's, that's one thing I miss, but I don't miss practicing. <laughs> anyway, I, think, I just, sorry, I, I got carried on a little bit. <laughs> no, I mean, it's gonna be great to welcome you in Lucerne. We're gonna do everything to make you feel great, to, to go to the extremes in music making and to go to the borders, we're going to experience it together with you, with wonderful orchestras, wonderful conductors, and we're just waiting to see you in Lucerne and, and invite everybody to come. And um, so I want to thank you, Yuja, for your thank appearance you. now. Yeah. You know, we understand, you know, what everybody's going through in the arts and, and particularly uh, great artists like you, what it means, and then we appreciate that you found the time to come and uh, we want to thank you. And the next happy hour is going to be with Yannick Nézé-Séguin, oh. great colleague of yours. <laughs> so we're yeah. going to continue to talk about extremes in our lives and- uh, Oh, he's you know, a good one to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember, I just remember he you know, I have a whole week in, in Philadelphia and in, in the afternoon, he'll go to Met to do a Sunday, sun, say, a Saturday afternoon concert. And then, you know, uh, opera is not 20 minutes concerto, it's three, four hours. And then he comes back by express train and play the concert at night in Philadelphia with me. And I was like, how do you do that? How? You know? <laughs> so, yeah, he's crazy, crazy like that. Um, 
so but, hey everyone everyone's different yeah. um in their own craziness so well we thank you very much yuja all the best yeah. to you and great stamina and um we keep yes our fingers crossed for i you. cannot i cannot wait to i'm i'm like i'm all already excited just talking about this so i cannot yeah, wait maybe you summer. take the ship to lucerne you don't have to take the plane <laughs> Have you ever taken the ship to to between Europe I and America? I will just walk. Okay, I'll bike. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll send you the bike and we'll bring the piano over I have a as bike. well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Yuja, ladies you. and gentlemen. We see you again at the next happy hour with Yannick Nesiga. It was great to be with you. Thanks to all Thank of you. Thank you. And take very good care. Greetings to Big Apple. Thank yeah. you, Yucha. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Ciao. <laughs>